And I just really finished uh, quite a conversation with my editor, but it wasn't about editing. It just was about the creator and life. And um, I uh, love talking to her because she um, tolerates me and she, she, she listens and she never gives me the indication that she doesn't want to hear what I'm saying, no matter how right or wrong it might be. Of course, I don't, I wouldn't rejoice in being wrong about anything, but you know, there's a possibility and probably the probability because we, we, uh, we look through a mirror darkly. You see that I'm not trying to be wrong about anything for sure. I'm reaching out to you and this is the vehicle that God's using right now. I'm not necessarily celebrated on television. The networks are not saying we got to listen to this man. And I was saying to her, though, that there is kind of a human way of looking at things. And I'm going to uh, take you through scripture I, I, I was looking at in the last, um, you know, restream or broadcast, Mark chapter 8. I asked Miss Ellen with a question um, about uh, this statement that Jesus made um, about his relatives. And it's in Mark chapter 3, verse 31. So I just want to just kind of propose some things kind of out there regarding what I would consider this as a conversation on the pathway of life. And I would call the subject of this considerations, okay? And who God is, who he's chosen, who he's using, how he looks at his creation, and kind of broad-based it some. I mean, that's just what it is. And I think that if, say, Trump sat down and talked with me for an hour or Zuckerberg or the Tesla owner, I think that I could say some things that they would be surprised about in relation to God and creation and their, their own work. Uh, yeah. And uh, I don't know if this would get to them, but I really believe that. I, I don't, I believe that um, they're not talking to me directly. Not that I've gone all out. I don't, I don't care about anything that they have achieved. I, I do care about the revelation that's been revealed to me, then I believe that they could see it. I, I feel the same way about Kanye West. There's some things I could say to him that would kind of answer some of the questions he has. I do believe that each of these people are profound in their own way. Listen, God's the creator. In the beginning, God. A lot of secularists and people that, that believe in evolution don't necessarily believe that a, a single creator did all of it. Well, that's they don't realize that the fact that they don't believe that is an indicator of how far they are from him. Yeah. And that things have to evolve from uh, some kind of amoeba, some kind of, of molecule life form and it evolves into all of this is nonsense at, at, the, at the highest level. But, you know, there's no man can see, as Jesus said it, the son, except the father reveal him. So, but he also says that um, no man can come to the father except he be drawn. So that, that has to do with cognitive understanding of the reality of the creator and the created. And so the created is so drunken in pride that they don't realize how far they are away from God, but how close they could be if they'd humble themselves. You see? So the Lord um, satisfied the wishes, his own wishes, by the sacrificial life of Jesus Christ on the cross. I mean, one person has said that, uh, and I mentioned it in my last broadcast, uh, how could you not understand suffering of mankind when the picture of the redemptive work of God has a cross as the center of it? 
everything that you and I could see in the greatest art, the greatest writings, greatest science, the greatest understanding of math is like we're, we're in intellectual poverty compared to the creator himself. We don't know anything. Matter of fact, one of the most intelligent people in the Bible says, if a man thinks he knows anything, I want you to know he knows nothing, at least not what he ought to know. So I'm, I'm by the grace of God following this pilgrimage through scripture. I'm using the Bible as something that man ought to know. Now, I do kind of, you know, look at some history. I kind of, I enjoy it. I mean, I don't worry about whether it's revisionist history. I try to go out there and see what's out there and then deal with it from God's perspective, though. I mean, and when you're dealing with history, there's human elements to it. But I try to say, how would God be looking at this? And then plead with him to help me with it. So um, I realize, again, that without the Lord's revelation, I don't I don't know nothing, anything. That's just what it is. But I do believe I know enough to help the world be better. Yeah. And that by the grace of God, I try to live it on a high scale. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I'm not rich, but in the natural, I'm rich towards God. I've never gone after money as a primary um, priority of my life. And um, I, that's enough even about that. So look, if you have a Bible and you want to read with me, look where it says over here in Mark chapter 3, I'm going to address something that is in the pathway. It's just something you have to look at. It's not ignorable unless you are totally disconnected with God and you don't read the Bible at all, And which means in some ways you like what I said in my last message. Jesus makes a statement to his own disciples. You're merely looking at things from a human point of view. And that would say, mean you're clearly nonsense in terms of eternal and spiritual realities. You're nonsense. If you look at things clearly from a human point of view, you're fatalist at best. Because all you can see in any discipline is failure. It's failure. You, I mean, yes, there is achievement. There is science, scientific development. There is mathematics. The ability to, there is a number of different things in entertainment, sports, and create all of this your failure compared to the creator himself, who is cognizant of everything that's going on in the entire creation and nothing catches them by surprise. Now, you don't believe that, that proves where you are. You're, you're, you, don't, you don't get God. Uh, and there's a lot in the Bible about that too. And maybe I'll allude to it, but right now, let me just go here. So anyway, in Mark three, it says, then Jesus' mother and brothers came to see him uh, they stood outside and sent word for him to come out and talk with them. There was a crowd sitting around Jesus, and someone said, your mother and your brothers are outside asking for you. Jesus replied, who is my mother? Who are my brothers? Then he looked at those around him and said, look, these are my mother and brothers. Anyone who does God's will is my brother and sister and mother. Powerful stuff right there. Now, you got to say that that isn't understandable on a human scale. There's something about that that's so eternal in its essence that he has to open your eyes to see it. But look, the essence of family is that number one, no matter what race you are, gender, uh, what country, you know, right, you're born in, what economic level you were born in, all that, that's sovereign stuff, meaning God allowed it. He, he, he decided it, actually. So that what I've been emphasizing um, in this last talk of so is not what you're going through, but how you go through it. I said, and I've made a point a number of times, that what you're becoming is greater than the challenges you're facing. Because why? You're developing in a way that God looks at whether or not um, he can, where he can place you in the next world 
and whether he can give you real power. He says this to, uh, with his disciples near the end of his life in Mark 16 and Matthew 28. Basically, he says, all authority has been given to me in heaven and in earth. Therefore, go ye. He's saying the last day construct it, to Christians is the issue of power. You see? Ruling, rulership. Well, that would be right because that's how creation began. See, let us make man in our image after our likeness, Genesis 1, and be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it, dominate, authority. Man fails in character, and his authority goes, wanes, to the point that he had to send his own son to satisfy the justice of God and then make a way we can get back to the call that God has for the creation of man. To be a forever being, live forever at the level that God himself is. I mean, that's a mouthful right there, but that's what you get. That's what you get from me. That's just what it is. But this, I told you the truth, though. If you think life is all about your comfort and your circumstances and your problems, and you think God is all about resolving those things, I want to tell you that you are the problem for God because you're out of focus. You're blind. And you're living a death style. I mean, I'm just saying. I don't, I don't. It doesn't matter how much money you have, or how educated you are. I mean, the fact that there's a Rhodes Scholar is a, it shows you the blindness of man. John sees the Rhodes. Can you imagine that? The Kimberly Mines, Diamonds, the elite society is a eugenicist, pedophile. I mean, that's his background. No character. So why would that be a big deal to get a Rhodes Scholarship? See, the bottom line is money and education. No, it's character and humility. It's not money. It's buying of God gold tried in the fires. It's how you handle being the person you are in the light of somebody who's going to judge you ultimately. That's what you're dealing with. I'm, I mean, I'm saying a lot, but that's what it is. See? So anyway, um, he's talking about relationships. So when God allows you to be uh, the gender you are and to have a husband and a wife, and then the conception happens in the union of the marriage bed and their children, well, see, you got relationship there. And I out of the father being the responsible husband and the responsible father and the mother being the responsible wife and the responsible mother, you raise children, look, on their principles, presuppositions. Yeah. And, and that's how God was going to replenish the earth, subdue the earth. Through, through husband and wife, unity of the marriage bed, and conception. And then children born. See? Now, whether we realize it or not, that vision is still going on. Adam, what he told Adam, be fruitful, multiply, Genesis 128, we plenish the earth, subdue it. We're all Adam's children. I, I've, I've, I've quoted this uh, one time, the nonsense of where the racial division stuff, that stuff is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. I'm just saying. It's ridiculous in the sense that we don't, get the fact that we're all, the mankind, are all relatives. You ever read this before? It says for, it's Acts 17, 26. He says, from one man, he creates all the nations throughout the whole earth. Can you see that? He decided beforehand when they should rise and fall, and he determined their boundaries. See? Powerful stuff. I, I don't necessarily like that translation, but it's still good enough to get the point across. He's made of one blood, all nations. I mean, we all are the genetic pedigree, seed from Adam. We're relatives in the blood of Adam. Now, born again believers in Christ, and this is what Jesus was dealing with in this Mark passage in Mark 3, is that we also now have a relationship spiritually with his father 
And so now we have both humanity and deity. We're both of those things. We're born of God, we're spiritual. But if you weren't even born of God, you still are spiritual. And the Bible talks about it in, in Genesis, no, in Ephesians, that you're children of disobedience. It's really what the way it says it. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's in here. I don't necessarily, again, it says in um, Ephesians 2, 1, once you were dead because of your disobedience and your many sins, you're dead. Now, I know that the average person who does all the nonsense, they don't think they're dead. And what he's talking about is you are not living on a scale where God can approve your life and he's going to disapprove you ultimately because you don't live for him presently. That's an important statement I just made there. Whoever is going to judge you ultimately is who you are to submit to presently. And there's no person in the earth has that level of ability for ultimate judgment until that day occurs. And then we do adjudicate. And he's trying to help us to work through it right now. He says, you used to live in, I'm reading Ephesians 2, you used to live in sin just like the rest of the world, obeying the devil, look at that, the commander of the powers in the unseen world. That's that's an amazing, that's, that's it's amazing. Now, non-Christians, they're not only not discussing whether there is a devil or not, um, they don't even believe in it. They don't even believe. I mean, it's just what it is. That's the Bible. Biblically, they're called. They're lost. And you know, inside of a person, they 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 don't they don't use that terminology. Who can I trust? You know, um, you know, my relatives. I don't know whether they want my money or their. I, I had a guy say to me once. He said, "Look, Wellington, choose your disciples." Um, before you become famous and you become a best-selling author or whatever it might be, he says, because number one, if you are if you're famous and your people come around you, you don't know whether they've come around you because of your fame, not your character, not your principles. And he says, no will they. They won't know either. They just know you're an attraction to them. See that? That's, that's critical. And now, but with God, he judges the heart. He knows where you are. And you, you, can, you can be in denial about all you want. But here in the, in the King James Version, that, that's another translation for those of you who don't know. Uh, in verse 1 of, Act, of Ephesians 2, and you, he made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sins, and look, in which you once walked according to the course of this world. And that, that's that's like the human, you know, in other words, the things that the world says you should do and the way you should do it, that's how you live. That's what he's saying here. According to the prince of the power of the air, look at this, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. There you go. And you may not think you're a son of dis disobedient to who? Disobedient to God. He's saying basically your father is not God. Even though he's the creator, you don't submit to him. But so, but you are submitting to someone and something. Hey, go, let me go on. Among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of the flesh, look, uh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh. It means what we want, the natural things, the natural influences. And there's a lot of it, and some of it is to the level of debauchery. Look, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as others. Woo! In other words, what he's saying is, you're in a family, but your family is going to be judged, but it's based on your behavior. You're disobedient, ungodly. You create systems of ungodliness. I mean, I was in this certain city in uh, Virginia, it might have been Portsmouth. And I said, did the people who own welfare in this community, 
create that system for themselves. And boy, that was a you hear a pin drop in there. I said entitlements that now is happening in many other cities around America. Did those people create that system? And of course, they knew the answer. I said, these people didn't do it for themselves. Yes, they've accepted the offer, but they didn't create that system. And what are we going to do about it? Now, if the church sits there with their hand folded like they can do nothing about it, then the power of God is limited through you anyway. Somebody is going to be born and is born to make a difference that as these people were led into debauchery, disobedience, and behavior unaccepted by God and his wrath, his eternal wrath is being for them, there are also people who are accepted by God who lead people to righteousness and behavior that's going to be available for even the next world. Your life is about behavior, not on a human scale, on an eternal scale. You were made to please the creator of the whole world. You're of him too. You're born again. But you're of him if you're not born again in that God is the author of life. Now, the grace of God is that he's told you about Jesus. Now, that all of that is an amplification of what I was addressing in Mark chapter 3, when Jesus answers those that were sitting around him and says, your mother and brothers are outside asking for you. And he says, who is my mother and who are my brothers? Then he looked at those around him and said, Look, these are my mothers and brothers. Anyone who does God's will uh, is my brother and sister and mother. Now, to a non-Christian, that sounds like, what? I don't know anybody that would say their biological relatives are not their relatives. See? Now, this goes with this statement that is made over here when Jesus was talking to Peter and uh, Mark 8, which is I addressed in my last talk, in verse 33, Mark 8, 30, Jesus turned around and looked at his disciples, then reprimanded Peter, get away from me, Satan. You are seeing things merely from a human point of view, not from God's. Well, that goes along with right here. Because from a human point of view, they were his mothers and brother out there, his mother and brothers. They, they, they were. But he was there to take them to a point of view that is with the Father, with the eternal essence. And he said, these are my mothers and brothers. Anyone who does the God's will is my brother and my sister. Why? Because you've come from the family of God. And you're going to live forever, and you're going to occupy the creation. Woo! That's a lot, isn't it? Isn't there leadership in any area you can think of right now? In any area, education, science, and you know, like right, medicine, art, and entertainment. You can't think of a world government. Somebody is leading it, and then there are positions. Well, you think that that came from mere man? It's that we're in the next world. So I can clearly say to you, in my father's house are many mansions, many dwelling places. He's talking about positions of responsibility. Wow. And the heirs, as it says in Romans chapter 8, and joint heirs with Jesus Christ are going to be the ones that are in the family of God. And, you know, fortunately, his biological relatives are only going to be there to the degree that they accepted Jesus as their Savior. Now, that's a strong statement. I mean, that's like, God has to reveal that to you. Otherwise, you're going to humanize it and therefore lower the standard of what has happened here in the redemptive story. Hey, you getting anything out of this? See, I'm working you. I'm working you right now. But this is the way it is. Sometimes stuff like this needs to be re-explained to Christians for clarity on, on this. This is the real life right here. 
being in the word, reading it, living out of it. See, anyone who does God's will is my brother and sister and mother. Why? Because you all are in the family of God and you're going to take responsibilities like Adam's children ended up taking responsibility in the whole earth that right now his failure is still occupying through his progeny the earth. Those that see the redemptive story of Jesus became born again and they're going to go to heaven. Now we think of going to heaven as just physically going to the place of heaven, but they become heavenly. That's the Lord's prayer. That will be done in earth as it is in heaven. You're not going to wait to get to heaven to function like that. And that's why I would say we're way behind the level of spiritual confidence that's going to make us have significant responsibilities in the next world. The heavenlies is Jesus, you know, responsibility because it says, Jesus said, all authority is given to me both in heaven and in earth. Well, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Jesus, now, what's important about that if he was God? If he's like what it says in John 1, all things were made by him. No, he's talking about him as the son of man, meaning he was conceived of the Holy Ghost, but born of a woman, his mom and Mary, right here. So as a man, he demonstrated how to please the father so that we could follow his example and become heirs and joint heirs with him. It's a, it's a mouthful, but it's, it's, it's exactly the truth. It's, it look, it's character-based, spirit of God, fruit. And that's Galatians 5. That's in the Bible, those of you who don't have a Bible. Man. You know, when I do this, I mean, it does, I, I mean, I don't know how many people are looking and who it will get around to and all that. It's, it's just putting the truth out. You want it, it um, here it is. It's gotten to you. You got to do something with it. What do you do with it? Well, you repent of your sins if you're not saved and ask Jesus to come into your heart. And then ask him to lead your life and rededicate yourself to him. You'll experience a transformation and then joy unspeakable. Yeah. Peace that passes all understanding. You may not even know why and how this has happened to your state of being changes. What? Your thinking changes and your tolerance levels. I mean, all of a sudden, you become a new creation. Yeah, exactly. People that's not born again don't get that. People that's just religious don't get that. They don't get it. Because you got to be born into it. And he, Jesus told Nicodemus in John 3, um, you must be born again. That's what he's saying. That's the, this talk I'm telling you. Anyone, 35 of, of uh, Mark 3, anyone who does God's will is my brother and sister and mother. What do you mean? Because they're related in the sense that they've adhered to the life substance of God in denying themselves and asking Jesus to become their life. And then, you know, in Colossians, as Paul wrote a letter to the Colossian church, when Christ, who is your life, shall appear. Now, the issue is you're born again, but you got to develop that life with the Holy Ghost, with the help, through the word. You give in the word every day. So I, I have this read through. I got people reading through, and I want to shout out to Ron Tolson over there in Phoenix, Arizona. He's got a whole website now on it, reading through. And I care about the credit, man. We try to get people saved. I mean, I told him he could take on all. But you read through the Bible. I got an edition here. It's my own Bible guide, Eternity Edition, where you read through the Bible every every day. Here is January. See, you can get an e version of it too. Four chapters a day will take you through the Bible in one year. And and I understand he's reading. They're reading on every morning four chapters out loud, and on on his website. And Miss Ellenwood told me about it the other day, and that's great, Ron. Keep going for it. And so, but now, 
I'm going to do something and go ahead and give you an exegesis of the of the month of January. I hope what what I'm seeing in that, like just like right now. Now, how am I going to get through the whole thing? But I can't even really get through these verses. I'm old, so I got a lot. So this is me. See how those darkened us February. See that March. I'm on finish month. Um, this is see this is 2023 now, and I have to do that because I have. You know, I probably finish. I'm almost when I get through the first six six weeks, six months of this, I'll be finished it for the whole year. I already did the latter part. I don't care. How can you read too much of the word, people? Huh? And plus, I'm at this place now where I want to give it out to you, and I got to stop right now. I hate even stopping. I've been going for it for thirty minutes right now. Believe it or not. And um, look, we're relatives right now. If you're born again, we're kin. Just like Jesus said, who are my relatives? He wasn't talking about his bloodline physically. The spiritual bloodline is what he was talking about. And if you're born again or if you're not born again, ask Jesus to forgive you for your sins, come into your heart and be uh, born of God. And then you'll find that this thing is reality at a level you can't measure. It's that way. And then start getting some disciplines in your life, okay? So read through the Bible. Get Join with me. Go to wellingtonboon.com and look at my website. You can get the e-version of it. And then if you want to, you know, you know, I mean, you don't have to. You can go ahead and do what you're doing. But you, you can, like, support. I'm going all over the world. I have sons in different countries right now. I want to get to them. And really, you know, I, I haven't talked about this much, but I would much rather fly there on my own jet or I'll take a net jet and get to these places and spend like weeks there and train them on stuff I got, like some of my books. I, mean, I got a whole character-driven book called My Journey with God. I mean, look at here. I mean, it's what? How long would it take me to teach uh, a nation this 300, almost 400 pages right here with a thousand, um, you know, references in the index? It's just what it is. It's not just a read through, it's a work through. Developing a, a consecration discipline in your life for pleasing God and then being prepared to take the responsibility you're going to have in the next world. Who's talking to you like that? Your life is not about this life. It's about the next life. You're living this life for forever. Get no chance to do it again. Okay, I know there are whole religions that say, well, we got, you know, we'll get a chance to fix stuff. Okay, you can take a chance on that if you want. Why not be righteous now? Okay, now. So those of you that want to help send me out to these nations and do it, then just do it. So for the kind of level I'm talking, it takes quite a quite a bit of resources. I'm 74, and I, right now it looks like God is giving me like strength of somebody, I don't know, maybe 60s, may even be younger than that. But I'm still old, and I don't care. And I'm getting around really well. And um, so send me out there. I need like large donations. If you're listening to me and you see that I've talked to you on a pioneer level for some of you people that may be listening to me or get this video, you you know Zuckerberg or you know the Tesla owner, whatever. Well, these people, I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I don't beg for anything, but you see the value of what I'm saying. This is not Black Lives Matter nonsense. This is how to live for God on an eternal scale, using the Bible as the book, but talking in practicality on how this stuff works in this life, in earth as it is in heaven, okay? So I'm talking to you. So if you want to support that with a large donation, then just do it. If you're not worried about the write-off, not everything. Look, the first century church didn't get no write-off. I don't know what the max out the cash apps thing is, but... You know, you call my office, wellingtonboone.com, and um, you can sell me over here 100000 or I mean, for, for me to travel significantly, say on NetJets, if I don't own my own jet, 
I could, I mean, a million dollars would help do that. Because I'm, look, I'm looking to go to South Africa, help build a work there that one of my sons got going in Johannesburg. I want to go. Uh, another one of my sons is in Malawi. He's over a university there. You understand what I mean? I can go on with this. I want to help with conflict resolution over there in Germany. And I mean, this is what it is. Okay? I want to get to some of those African churches, too. Uh, Robert Kayan's over there in Uganda. And um, he's a good man. And then I'd love to get over there to Bishop Adeboye at Redeem Church. Kumuye over there. These Nigerians. Nigerians are very aggressive spiritually, but then they got some nonsense. I want to talk to them beyond miracles and signs. I want to talk to them about the reality of the eternal, next life understanding. I believe that's the next uh, kind of thing that God wants to teach us. And I have a lot on it. And But... You can have a miracle sign and wonder and all that, but still going to die. But the key is whether you're equipped for the next assignment. That's where I'm at with it. I got to go now. Hate going. I, like, I love talking with you. And so, look, let me go back over it again. If you see supporting me significantly, reach me. You can reach me. Go to wellingtonmoon.com, and then my assistant will talk with you or email me, bishop at wellingtonmoon.com. And then, like, say, I want to give a significant donation to you. I have a foundation called the Boone Foundation. I need seed money to get it going. It's already done. Okay? So do it. I mean, look, you're donating to something. Does it have to be just the stuff that already naturally is being going? Isn't the value to in the word? Sure it is. I know it is. Anyway, I got to go. I do love you, and God bless you. Listen, be encouraged, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Is my prayer for you. I'm Wellington Boone. God bless.